What is up you guys? My name is Zachary and today we are going to be talking about ProRes and we're going to be talking about it in the instance of today's Apple event. They announced the iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max will be using ProRes if you have it enabled. So we're kind of going to uh, dive into that and how a lower tier option of storage might actually hinder the video quality that you thought you were going to be able to get from these. So here we go. Let's talk about ProRes. Now there is a lot of different versions of ProRes. In fact, you can see it on a graph here. I am simply going to be talking about um, ProRes 422LT. I don't actually know the codec that Apple will be using, which of these they're actually going to be using. So as that information comes out, I will obviously make a part two to this video where we go back and we kind of look at how it was actually implemented. And I don't think we're gonna know until um, at least next Friday or the Friday after once these iPhones start getting into consumers' hands. Now, let's start just by looking at this graph. We're going to see that 1080p, so for those who don't know, um, the 128 gigabyte model will be locked at uh, 1080p in ProRes at 30 FPS. Now, if we take the this chart that I have, even at 25 um, frames per second, you are going to get 85 megabits per second. To put that into um, like a comparison from the iPhone 12 Pro Max, you would have had to download a third party app, uh, Filmic Pro is one of them, where you could max out the bit rate at 140 um, megabits per second. So even just that data, and that is just on the Pro models um, or the Pro Max model, on the other 12s, you were able to hit 110 megabits per second. So you're looking at 4K there at 60 FPS is hitting 110 or 140, depending on the device you had. And this year, even at the lowest ProRes, it will be hitting 85 at 1080p at 30 FPS. That is a lot of information just for 1080p, especially for a cell phone. So I can see why Apple has cut the 4K option out for the 128 gigabyte models. I will say, I do think it should be your choice, but you have to remember you're going to be holding photos, videos, apps, the software itself on the storage of this model. At least they got rid of the 64 gigabyte model and now you have the 128 as a base. But I, if I was you, I would go ahead and bump that storage up if you did want 4K or if you just even wanted more space for the 1080p. But let's go ahead and talk about 4K and why I don't think it was a good idea for um, or why I think it actually was a good idea for Apple to cut it out of the lower end model. 4K at 25 FPS, you're looking at 342 megabits per second. That is leaps and bounds. That's more than double uh, of last year's iPhone. Remember I said iPhone 12 Pro Max could hit 140 megabits per second in its video at 4K at 60. You're you're talking about a large amount of data for the um, image processing to utilize and um, for you to get all that data to work with um, while in post. So even just that alone, I, I honestly don't know what smartphone competes in something like that. And we don't know if this is the low end that Apple is going to use, I'm assuming because of how much the bit rate is. Um, but you have to remember this, this number goes up, not only because you're not doing 24 FPS, you're doing uh, 30. So you're also going to get more bit rate there, but you're also looking at just ProRes 422, you're going to go ahead and get 492 megabits per second there. And then HQ on top of that, you're going to get 737 and it just keeps stacking on top of that. So depending on what Apple does, the bit rate could be insane for iPhone. That's just a lot of storage and I can see why Apple didn't do it. So what do you think? Do you think um, Apple should allow people to use the 128 gig the way that they please? 
and have that 4K? Or do you think it was smart for Apple to scale that back, do ProRes at 1080 at 30 FPS, because that is almost an equivalent bit rate of the 4K and the past for iPhones, um, while giving those people who did opt for a higher storage tier to utilize that higher quality 4K uh, ProRes. So in this tweet you see here, um, one minute of ProRes is uh, four, uh, one minute of ProRes video in 4K is four gigabytes. That's insane. That that really is insane. Um, 10 bit HDR ProRes is approximately one gigabyte for HD, which makes sense to have on a smaller um, iPhone storage size, and then four gigabytes for 4K. I just I I don't know. I'm going to leave it up to you to decide in the comments below. Let me know so we can kind of um, have this discussion again when part two comes out. Um, but once again, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe so we can continue these conversations. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm really interested to know and... Uh, if you have any more information, go ahead and drop that or you can message me on Twitter and uh, that way I can collect even more information about this and do an even deeper dive into this. I am really curious uh, as someone who films, um, it's going to be very interesting all of the new camera modes and uh, like the cinematic mode that iPhone 12 and or iPhone 13 and 13 Pro can do and ProRes and th this is just crazy. It is truly a big leap in camera this year for iPhone and I can't wait to see what they come up with next year. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.